Kia ora guys, welcome back to the Black Tuesday. My name is Max, I'm the host over here at this channel. And for today's video, we're going to review the All Blacks vs. Los Pumas 2023 Rugby Championship Clash. It was a really one-sided affair, and so we're going to go over the footage, the full-time stats, and at the end, I'll share my opinion on the game. But firstly, a big thank you to my patrons for all your support and everything. I cannot say that enough, guys. And remember as well, if you do like my videos, do remember to subscribe, as this ratio would be very, very nice to go up and stuff like that we're going to get right into the first try of the game it's scored by dane coles let's check this stuff out after the all blacks dodge a serious bullet when damian mckenzie regathers a kick of his own that was charged down by pablo matera los pumas fall asleep at the wheel los pumas seems to be so frustrated at matera not scoring that they forgot another 79 minutes of test rugby awaited them in the first line out of the match los pumas backs appear to form a rectangle from the alternate angle for a play that could have been very interesting los pumas Puma's set piece was atrocious however, with 2024 All Blacks captain and world player of the year Scott Barrett stealing this line out ball. Perhaps what's the most interesting though is that Caleb Clark is the player who shoots forward to collect the pass from Aaron Smith as the line out ends. By putting Clark in as the defender against Los Pumas first receiver, the All Blacks are able to use Sam Kane, the only forward who isn't in their lineout, as a jackal threat in open play straight away. Having exited such a hypothetical formation to take this pass though, such a defensive formation is also allowed for the key decision makers of the back line to get more space in the All Blacks formation. This extra space allows for Damian McKenzie to slot in from 10 and subsequently select which carrier is the best option to lead a counter-attack after he has the two big fellas at first and second receiver. As Ioane fetches the ball, he's a third man in a simple hands down the line formation. Despite such a simple formation being used, as the All Blacks hadn't looked to initially attack, Los Pumas fail big time in defending it. Although he was named at 12, Lucio Sinti is normally a winger and an outside centre, having played all of his previous minutes at Test Rugby in those positions. Sinti is not a 12. What he does here is the exact exact kind of defence you'd expect from a winger. He shoots out of line to immediately sprint forward at Ioane. As we can clearly see, McKenzie has just a single direction to pass to due to the hands down the line formation. McKenzie's body language suggests the pass. Carreras, as any defensive number 10 should do, immediately crosses over to mark Geordie Barrett. Cincy, on the other hand, botches the defence completely. The moment that Ioane pops into the frame with Bowden Barrett out of frame on his outside, Cincy is only a about 7 metres away from him. Carreras is clearly looking to mark Barrett as the arrow shows up, while Rodrigo Bruni wishes to do the same to Ioane. While Cinzi has made the wrong decision, his commitments to making this wrong decision hasn't given Rodrigo Bruni the time to catch up. At this point, Cindy has no other choice but to commit to Ioane, and yet he doesn't. He points his chest towards Bowden Barrett, while immediately looking at Ioane, and his salivation over an intercept try completely back fires, allowing Ioane through for one of the easiest clean breaks he'll ever get. After about 30 metres or so, Ioane allows for Narawa to set the first ruck, while Frizzell sets the second after a horrid missed tackle by Tomas Lavanini. Knowing they need a bit more space, the All Blacks send Narawa to carry on the wing again, before Los Pumas fail to defend the worst pod shape I've ever seen. This is the same flat pod structure that the All Blacks failed against Ireland, as from setting here, Scott Barrett needs extra time to form a ruck around Shannon Frizzell if the ball is taken taken into contact. While Frizzell can realistically pass to either Coles or Barrett, it's fairly obvious where the ball will go, given two defenders are marking Coles. Sordoni fails to identify the fact that a pass from Frizzell will only go to Barrett, and with this misread turning up, Barrett slots between the shoulders of two defenders, offloads to Coles, and the first points are on the board. The All Blacks double down after Coles' try, with Artie Savia crossing just three minutes later. While there isn't too much analysis to do here, I'll certainly be looking at Argentina's close range defence in a future video given their dodgy track record there and I'll get that done before the World Cup. For the third try though, we get a lot of innovation from the All Blacks as Geordie Barrett dots down for try number three. This innovation is to pass the ball back from whence it came. This try to Jacob Stockdale over here, it's one I've discussed in a previous video, but it's essentially been created by the 2018 Ireland side having all the pieces for a blind side attack predetermined at a set piece. Joe Schmidt has now taken this idea over to the All Blacks but uses a ruck to put these predetermined plans
plans in place. Shortly after a carry by Sam Kane as a single man pot on the outside, Caleb Clark turns up as a proper ruck clearance option, hence his selection in the team. While the two Barretts in the backs also latch on, we can see the Barretts legs highlighted over here. While a pretty standard carry gives the All Blacks a meter at the next phase, we spotlight the movement of Kane, Clark and the Barretts, who are all working to the command of Aaron Smith at halfback. They sit in the blind side of the pitch with Clark appearing like he wants to carry with Kane as the ruck clearance this time. Clark, however, has improved his passing since the last time Los Pumas faced him. Because they fails to realise the purpose of the Barretts joining the ruck, Bertrand and Sinti fail to spread wide enough from the second ruck as Clark takes the pass. Jordy then sends the ball on to Bowden as Cancillier fails to intercept it, while Sinti's missed tackle puts Bodie into space, and with just one more inside pass back to Jordy, the All Blacks extend the scoreline to 15-0 and then subsequently 17-0 with Damien McKenzie getting the conversion over. After Tomas Lavanini and Matthias Moroni botch their attempts to score tries, the All Blacks get back to Los Pumas half in the 29th minute after Los Pumas finally start playing the game. But anyway, we do need to talk about Damien McKenzie. On 28-20 he receives a skip pass from Aaron Smith who has used Clark as a fake crash ball runner to suck in two defenders. With Moroni marking McKenzie and Carreras marking Geordie Barrett, McKenzie has a perfect gap to send Barrett into, especially thanks to Carreras standing aside on to watch Ioane. Carreras is in a dreadful position to defend against an opponent with a front foot ball, yet McKenzie instead runs into Moroni, flicking the pass back to his left. To catch this pass, Barrett now ends up directly behind McKenzie with three defenders in front of him. As Barrett takes the pass, Ioane has now reached the point between the two Pumas defenders, but since he, the inside man, has now been given the time to tackle Barrett, who loses a meter after being cornered by the defence. A lot of the discussion post-match that really annoyed me is that a lot of people were trying to say, get McKenzie into the starting lineup again, he's better than Richie Mwonga. Ian Foster has tinkered with the spine far too much already. He's already got rid of, you know, all of the other options that could cover 12. And while David Havili is injured, he's been using Geordie Barrett as the backup option in combination with Rico Ioane. Hoskins Satusha was gone at eight. He's not even in the All Blacks 15 for crying out loud, whereas Brad Weber has been dropped from nine. The tinkering with the spine this close to the World Cup needs to stop, and we need to just stop all this talking about so-and-so should be in the team, all that. It's time for the selections to end. I'm not going to make any more selection videos after every team names their World Cup squads for this year because you need to back your team and just wish them well regardless of who's in it. DMAC had, a, had a several like hot and cold moments through this test. He was on fire for some moments and he wasn't for others. When you're a bit hot and cold like that, the best use for you is off the bench and I do believe Jersey 22 is the best one for McKenzie. But luckily, Shannon Frizzell and Josh Lord arrived to save Geordie Barrett, successfully recycling his offload. Smith sends the ball out of the ruck formed on Frizzell. Lucio Sinti, responsible for Ioani's clean break before Coles' try, now makes another defensive error. While McKenzie's catching the ball, Tomas Gaijo shifts from the ruck in time to Mark de Groot, a dummy runner, while Sinti refuses to move further to the outside and mark McKenzie. Because since he is between his two teammates, Matera is now unable to move into the space over here to mark Ioane. Since his crucial defensive mishap allows McKenzie to send Ioane through a gap again, what's even worse before halftime is that Los Pumas only player to perform well in the first half, Rodrigo Bruni, eventually does lose his discipline and does this. He clearly enters them all from the side to tackle Frizzell, but not only does he put the All Blacks under advantage, he now leaves a gap between himself and Santiago Carreras. If Smith detaches from the mall and exploits the space, it's always going to be a try and a few seconds later Smith indeed does so after taking the offload from Coles and so Bruni gets the yellow card. Even though Los Pumas were a lot stronger in the second half, they've completely lost control of their attack as they're visibly looking very panicked. For example, as Sordoni is tackled by Lomax and Frizzell, Gaijo is so eager to get on the outside and eye up a carry towards his opposite Ethan de Groot that he forgets to help Tomas Lavanini at the 
the breakdown, with Bertrandu forced to make a slower pass. This line of Kiwi defenders is able to advance in on Sinti, which Artie Savia capitalises on straight away as Geordie Barrett makes the tackle. As Clark nullifies Buffelli as a counter ruck, Savia and Kane are able to confidently approach the breakdown thanks to the fact that backs are the only players on the floor to clean out for Los Pumas, while Gonzalez is on the wing, marked by McKenzie. While Geordie Barrett's clearance kick after collecting Savia's offload isn't very good, this turnover reinforces the All Blacks' psychological edge. Los Pumas pay the price for trying to play the game too quickly and are punished big time for their lack of organisation. Sordoni does get their first try in the 52nd minute thanks to a close range effort from his team, but after losing that initial series of phases in the second half, they leave the All Blacks half, believing it's hard to score against the All Blacks still. Now everybody for Bowden Barrett's try, what a score that was. The All Blacks appear to have either taken a leaf out of the Black Ferns book or stayed up the night before the game to watch my video on Johnny Sexton. As a few of them follow me on Instagram, that wouldn't be surprising but anyway, this formation over here is very similar to the pot of backs formed around Teresa Fitzpatrick in the 2022 World Cup final. Long story short, this move is utilised by both teams to have a distributor between two strike runners, DeMont and Naro respectively on the right, with Barrett and Waka respectively on the left. Now that we go back, DeMont is the player who loops around to the open side for the Black Ferns, but in the case of the All Blacks when we switch back over, they use the middle player to loop around as Ireland would do with Johnny Sexton. Narawa and Barrett are both available to carry, but as Barrett has the hands down the line formation to his left, he's a much more realistic option for McKenzie. Straight before taking the ball into contact, Geordie Barrett pretends to be his brother Scott, and he genuinely plays the role of a fake forward, sending the ball behind himself before being tackled as Ioane runs on with him. McKenzie instead travels into the space behind Barrett, knowing this pass is already going to come. As Matthias Milando, freshly substituted on, his Initially, Mark Juani, he's all of a sudden having to adjust for a tackle again, but because McKenzie is coming from a deeper position, well, McKenzie has the time to adjust and he can glide through this gap over here. Santiago Carreras, though, makes a shocking read of the play. As we pause again on 56.01 in the match, McKenzie has broken the line successfully with Narawa coming off him. Orlando still has his presence available to block off Narawa, so if McKenzie wishes to pass, then he has Bowden Barrett on the outside. This is while Mateo Carreras, the 11 who is now defending from 15, is pretty certain to stop McKenzie if he keeps going. Instead of trusting Mateo to make the massive hit that's on route, Santiago flies straight in at McKenzie and leaves Barrett completely unopposed. Mateo now has to come further across, and though he makes the tackle, Barrett is still able to ground the ball. For the All Blacks' final try of the match, a simple overlap allows Amoni Narawa to score to celebrate his well-deserved try on debut, while Augustine Creevy gets a consolation try for Los Pumas off a driving mall. So, what can we ultimately take away from this game? Before we finish off, we'll have one more ad break, then we'll meet up again to go over the halftime stats, then go over my thoughts on each team's effort. Now everybody, on paper... The teams are virtually even, 51% possession for the All Blacks, 49 for Los Pumas with a bit of a lopsided share of possession on either half determining I guess how many points were scored in the second half compared to the first per team. Territory relatively similar for both halves but the All Blacks have beaten Los Pumas for metres. They've won for clean breaks and they've won for offloads and turnovers one as well so Realistically, there's not too much difference between the team. The difference in the two teams was which one could execute the game plan better and which team had better cohesion with the other. The All Blacks have been picking pretty much the same front row over and over and over again through the Rugby Championship. And as Cody Taylor did miss a few games last year, Coles has a bit of that cohesion with those props as well. The key difference though being the clean breaks. That is the statistic that shows us that difference of cohesion. Los Pumas on defense, well, they were atrocious. Just because you have a decent tackle percentage, as we can see, they have a higher one with 83%. It's not always the raw statistics that tell you the story of the game, it's the context of them. While Los Pumas and the All Blacks made a similar level of tackles, Los Pumas completed them at a higher rate, but they weren't actually in the spaces for those clean breaks 
able to make the tackles in the first place, hence why the All Blacks only made seven of them, Los Pumas only made two, which were fluked pretty hard. The goal kicking, that's another thing I was talking about with Damien McKenzie, those, uh, those there rather, they were part of his cold moments, but it's okay, look, Test Rugby has been a thing he hasn't been in for a wee while, and so you know what, if he wants to make mistakes, get them over and done with now, I'm still backing him to be that utility man off the bench. Um, Ruck success though. The All Blacks didn't quite get those rucks. They still won the game. The lineouts though, that's how they were able to do it. Los Pumas, 75% for the lineout, 67% for the scrum. Ethan DeGroote, take a bow. That is the bloke who should have been man of the match. Jordy Barrett was an absolute workhorse on defense, but Ethan DeGroote at the set piece, man, he went to work. Josh Lord, very good as well. I was so happy to see him back at test level. And the discipline, it happens, Argentina. They need to learn to control that stuff. They really do. Discipline, it's going to be a huge factor for them at this World Cup. And if they can't control that, I'm pretty worried for them. These Pumas players, they've been able to get all these really good results over the last few years, and under Chica they started happening more often, but you can't just win a World Cup by a good performance here and there. This is Los Pumas, I guess, final chance to build, you know, this habit of winning that you really need to get done for a World Cup. You need to be able to win seven games in a row to lift that bloody trophy, and if you can't do this, then Los Pumas are facing a quarterfinal exit, and with such an amazing side of the draw that gives them a golden opportunity to actually lift the Webb Ellis Cup, this is a real shame to see. They need to control their discipline, and they really need to get control back of their set piece as well. Lucio Sordoni, it was really nice to see him back at prop, but they need to continue picking those first choice players. Los Pumas are really running out of time before this World Cup to start developing that habit of winning. And man, um, I truly believe, you know, this is one of the worst Los Pumas performances I have ever seen. Lucio Sinti is one of the, you know, hottest prospects coming along in Argentine rugby. But the fact that he's neither a center or a first choice winger and now he's tried at 12 and has failed there. He might have just lost his spot at the World Cup, which is a real shame for him because he is a really promising player. But he was really just showcased to be totally out of his depth on defense. The All Blacks' other standouts include Scott Barrett, of course, who I was mentioned before. Another workhorse, Tyrell Lomax. Rico Ioane was really good. And Aaron Smith... Good old callback to his older days. Thank you very much for watching this video, guys. I'm going to end it over here. So make sure to sign up to Patreon and join the other guys if you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like this video down below and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy it, of course. I'm also on Instagram and on threads. You can check me out over there. And I'm going to see you later for the next one, everybody. Take care and cheers for watching the video. Cheers from Max.